the Hog of the Rock Faith International Ministries Incorporated. We're glad to be uh, before you this morning. My wife and I are the pa founders and pastors of Rock Faith International Ministries Incorporated, better known as Rock Faith in Chester, Virginia. And we're just so happy we're able to come live uh, to you this morning. For God is good and he is greatly to be praised. Sit back and relax and let us hear from what the Lord had to say in these trying times. Our title today is Greater the Trials, Greater the Anointing. Subtitle, We Have to Walk It Out Through Faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come today before your presence. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. We thank you, dear God, for just being so good to us, even in these trying days. These things did not catch you by surprise, for you are all, you know it all, and you are everywhere. So we thank you this morning, as the word come forth, as I humble myself before you and this great audience. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, greater the trials, greater the anointing. Subtitle, we have to walk it out through faith. My bullet points are, the trying of our faith was caught, will call us to possess a greater patience. Everything can't be microwaved. It has to be slow cooked. We need to embrace our trials. We really need to embrace our trials, knowing that it's going to work out for our good. God won't put on us more than we can bear. And finally, all things work out for our good in Christ Jesus. So I want to encourage us on this morning that many of us are going through some very, very trying times, even before the coronavirus. People have been going through some great challenges, especially the household of faith. But I want to encourage you on this morning. If we look at it right, our trials will actually enhance the anointing in us. It will bring glory to God. Okay, so let's get started. If we turn to Romans, the ninth chapter, verses 13 through 21, and I'm, I will call these scriptures out so you can write them down. I might not go through every last one of them. Okay. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And I'm going to drop down to 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor. Okay? And that's referencing also Jeremiah 18, 1 through 9. And as the Lord would have him go to the potter's house, and he watched the potter mold the clay. Then it came to the point one was kind of messed up, so he had to break it down and re rework it. I remember back home in North Carolina in a Husky, Kofa area where I grew up, um, we were, uh, my brother and I, Larry, who's uh, two years older than myself, was nine of us. But Larry was so good at making uh, sculptures and we would make pottery and let it, let the sun dry it. So Larry was excellent <laughs> and I did all right. But there were times as we were molding the clay, it didn't come out right. We would take the clay and crush it and add water in it from the pump the pump water, and remold it. So we had to break that clay down, that pottery, that sculpture to rework it. And that's what God does for us. He'll have to break us down, remold us for his uses. So that pottery, that clay back in North Carolina couldn't say to me, Gooley, Larry, why are you doing this? We The clay has to be submissive. So in other words, we are the clay made from the earth. So we have to be submissive to the molding and the restructuring of uh, God, of what God is doing in our lives. 
I said to this, he's the potter and we are the clay and will do to us as he pleases. See, God is doing all this to get honor, the glory for himself. See, we were created to honor God. When we fight against the trials, what I mean is when we go to pieces uh, about the trials we're going through, does that give honor to God? Now, it hurts. Even what we're going through now is challenging. It's hurting. But guess what? It didn't catch, catch God by surprise. So what we need to do is, God, I honor you even in this trying time. I honor you for whatever might come my way. I honor you. So I want you to get the glory. If we turn to Romans 8, 31 through 39, and it says, what shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And this reminded me, again, what we're going through worldwide. And I, the other day it came to my spirit that about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And prior to them coming out that night, the Lord instructed Moses for the children of Israel to anoint the lentils, the doorposts, with the blood of those lambs, the goats, or whatever. And so the death angel could pass over. And all of the Israelites who obeyed, that household was saved. And I believe, just in my perspective, some of the Egyptians jumped on board as well. So it came to me, Ghoulie, anoint your house, anoint your lentils, anoint your door. Of all three doors, anoint them. So I got with my wife and daughters who were over, and I, went, I told them to stay there and point, and I walked at all three doors and opened them and anointed them that that uh, spirit of death, that spirit of coronavirus, will not come in this household. Now, I know many saints have been afflicted by it. Yes, we know that there, uh, that we have a certain time to live. And regardless of the time or amount of days we have to live, let's live it to the fullest. But I believe sometimes uh, because we don't bind and rebuke and call the blood of Jesus on certain things, it comes upon us or it can come upon us. And when we rebuke it, it will not get inside of us. So let's do that. So if I would encourage any who would like to do that, that's what the Lord gave to me. This is not a command for the Lord. It's just what we did for our household. Uh, let's turn to 1 Peter 1 and 7. 1 Peter 1 and 7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. In other words, the trying of our faith is so precious than of gold. Now, gold is a precious commodity. It's down in the earth and it says that's been there for countless years. And the pressure and the heat and all of that makes that gold even more valuable. Well, we are more valuable than the precious um, stones, minerals in the earth, even though we are made from the earth, this body. But it should bring glory to God. So as we go through our trials and our, tri our tribulations, don't go to pieces. It hurts. What we're going through now and other things we're going through and we'll go through, it hurts us. It's a tough thing. Regardless of how much we believe in Christ, and we should, but this flesh is sensitive to pain. But if we handle it right, that a trial of our faith, it will bring glory to God. So if anyone out in this land, Facebook land and everywhere else, if you're falling to pieces because of what's going on, get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. For the word of God is our source, our help, our buckler, our protector, uh, our provider, which is God. Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus. So we need to get into the word and don't wait until trials come that we run to God 
or don't wait till until, let's say, for instance, when this great tribulation is over with, just like 9-11, just like the uh, onslaught of the AIDS virus back in the 80s and it's still going on. People start coming together to God, to families, to countries. But as time passed, it seemed like people start fading away from the togetherness. For an example, people go to funerals. They grieve over the loved ones. They cry. Sometimes they want to pull the people out of the casket, especially those who were not close to that uh, one is going on. Then after the funeral, people resume their lives as normal. Let this not be us this time. I pray, I pray that this will not be us this time, that God is using this time to bring people to him, bring families together, bring the country and the world together, all for his glory. And, and also at least have some moral goodness. Okay, so that's very, very important. Now let's go to James 1, 3 through, through 4. Trial causes our faith to grow. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience. Let me tell you, as I said in the bullet points, we want everything microwave. I mean, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and it's not fast enough. If you go to fast food restaurants and those in the middle, uh, a lot of the foods or food is microwave or can be. But if you go to an, uh, an exquisite or uh, higher type of restaurant and you ask them, or even in the middle range, do you have a microwave to heat the food? Now, I'm one, I love my food hot. So sometimes I will send it back and say, can you heat it? Put it in the oven or wherever. And it, when they put it back in the oven, it takes a long time and I don't mind waiting. We have to stop wanting everything microwave. Like God deliver me now and that's not quick enough. But a lot of times we haven't lived the life that God has called us to live. And also as believers, sometimes we get a, a slack or lax in our relationship. And also even at that, we're living all that we can. God is working something out in us. There are some things that I've been praying to God about and have prayed to him about uh, back in 79 when I first came to Virginia. And a lot of those things have come to pass, uh, quite a few of them, but there are some that are still in the making, yet I believe God. And so there were times I was rushed, tried to rush God. God, hurry up, hurry up. I'm so glad that God wasn't moved by my tears, my crying, my stomping the floor, I confess, in those earlier years, my jumping up and down, my complaining, my whining. That didn't move God. Mm -hmm. Faith moved God. But also, through this patience, I grew in wisdom and in knowledge. Now, the anointing in my life, through the trials and the tribulation, especially the last 10, 11 years, really has increased the anointing in my life for God's glory. So when trials are coming, when we're going through so many trials, seem like before you can get out of one, some more will come. God is using that to bring glory to him, to increase the anointing. Sec, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, watch this. There hath no temptation taken you, but that such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God is not going to put, he, he, he's not going to put so much on us that we can't bear it. But yet at the same token, we must be able to go through lifting up, up our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help, for our help cometh from the Lord. OK, so we will have to endure. But a lot of times it's not that God will put so much on uh, on us. It's that our obedient disobedience, our laziness will make the trial even much harder. So there is nothing, nothing new under the sun, as the 
uh, writer uh, Solomon stated, there's nothing new under the sun. It may have a different color, a different texture, but it's nothing new. And God knew all the time. So sometimes we think what we're going through, no one else has experienced it. Sometimes we think that we're the only one going through this. But if you listen to people, you'll come to find out many times they're going through even greater trials and tribulations. So we need to realize, especially in Christ, there is nothing that we're going through that God doesn't know about, about it. And there's no temptation to, uh, that has come upon us that is not common to the ordinary man, everyday man, woman, boy, and girl. So again, greater the trials, greater the anointing. We have to walk it out through faith. See, we can talk faith. Let me make this very clear. We can talk faith. We can talk about how we're going to trust God and how we're going all the way. And what we're going through now is a serious thing. But can we trust God going through this time? Or are we going to walk around scared to death? Now, fear will cause people to do some crazy things. If you've heard and been aware of what's going on, people are fighting over uh, toilet tissue. People are fighting over uh, disinfectant. They are literally and have fought over. I mean, I heard of a story just recently. A young man in the store jumped this older man. Don't know the full story. I'm just generalizing it. And because the man probably had more than server items, probably had server items. So they got into a scuffle. I saw it on uh, social media where at Costco a couple weeks ago, people were out on the parking lot fighting over product. Fear. We that are in Christ, yes, we feel the pain. Yes, we see what's going on. Yes, fear will come upon us and at us, but we have to put the word on it. We have to put the word on. Let me tell you this. I was praying for someone over the phone yesterday and they were going through some depression, going through some things and, and all this was going on. And I prayed for that person. And as a day went on during my daily activities, I felt that, that anxiety of this virus and all of that coming upon me, coming at me. And I started realizing, wait a minute. Evidently, as I pray for that person in the Lord, that spirit now has to go somewhere and it tried to attack me, but I could not allow that to happen. Greatest heat is in me than heat is in the world. Put the word on it, the blood of Jesus upon it. Okay, as we go on to the next one, um, 2 Peter 2 and 9. God knows how to deliver us. Okay? The Lord know, knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. If we think what we, and we know what we're going through right now is terrible, don't fall in the hands of an angry God. This is tough. But if we fall in the hands of an angry God, of God, there, there, that's it. That is it. Because we need to cry out to the Lord. And I've been crying out to the Lord for not just America, for this nation, but for the world. And you will, we will hear many times and see banners and flags. God bless America. I have changed that. America bless God because God has already blessed America. God has already blessed every nation under the sun. We need to bless God, meaning to worship God. For God knoweth how to deliver us. So my hope is in God. My hope is in God. Now, does the spirit of fear, like I said, the spirit of fear concerns some things I'm going through, concerning this uh, virus, Yes, it comes at me. Sometimes I feel the dread. I feel like it could be a worldwide recession and depression. It could be. Uh, I'm a farm boy. And I was just thinking, if the farmers can't get uh, the crops in the field, if the manufacturers or the processing plants 
can get the different meats uh, from the uh, grow from the farmers, from the cattlemen, or uh, persons like that, then it can't get into the grocery stores. If the workers at the various distribution centers get sick and they can't do their job, they can't get it to the truckers. If the can't uh, the truckers are sick, they can't get to the different stores. If the workers are sick, then how are they to get the food to the consumers? So a lot of things can happen, and these things have gone through my mind. But I said, but God, I trust in God that we're going to come out better, coming out better than when we went in. So people, to everyone, let us worship God. Let us come together with family some of the things we're fighting about are just insignificant on our jobs, in our homes, on our in government, in church. Come on. I pray that this will cause all of us worldwide to reconsider. A lot of people uh, have lost their jobs and probably will or right now they can't work and they complain about that job. I hate that job. I can't stand that job. Now many wish they could go back to work. And for us believers, this is no surprise. We know what the word of God said in the last days. So I would encourage us to hold on unto the word of God. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trusting in God even when we don't understand what he is, what he is doing in our lives. Trusting in God even when we don't understand what he's doing in our lives. God knows what he's doing. We don't always understand. And most of the time we don't understand. But it states, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. This too shall pass. And if by chance this is the end of the end for all of us, the world, you know, we're living and trusting God because we have a better home. I'm not a foolish man. I don't like pain. I'm not trying to get rid of myself. I will fight to my, until my last breath. But I know I've got a better place because I don't want to live in this old wretched body for the rest of my days. As we and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Com commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prosper in, in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. The Lord is telling us to rest in this uncertain times or these uncertain times. Saints, especially, we have to learn how to rest and be at ease in these difficult times because the world is looking at us. And like I said before, we can testify, we can shout to the ceiling, ain't nobody going to turn me around, I'm going all the way with the Lord. Now, this is a time that the rubber meets the road. This is a time we're going to have to put up or shut up. Shouting won't do it, and we need to praise God in our physical stance. But we must have faith to trust God. So saints, be encouraged. People, be encouraged because it's greater than the church as we see it, the building. But as believers, we are the church of the baptized believers. And let me go to Job 23 and 18. Job 23 and 18. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Let me read that again. But he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Job in all of his trials, 
Finally decided I'm going to put my hand over my mouth and be quiet. Job lost a lot, but he gained more than he lost. Even his relationship, and he was a righteous man, but mm -hmm. his relationship, his anointing, his growth in the Lord increased. So saints, please allow this and these trials that we're going through cause us to grow in the ammunition and nurture of the Lord. Please get a hold on God and don't let go. Please be filled daily with his anointing. Please learn how to forgive, forgive yourself, forgive others. And if we say we want to grow in the Lord, but how does one grow? Most of the time, it's through trials and tribulations. So I would encourage us, as the title says, greater the anointing, greater the trials, I'm sorry, greater the trials, greater the anointing. Subtitle, we have to walk it out through faith. Again, shouting won't do it. Just going to church won't do it. Um, and all these things are necessary. They are good. But we're going to have to walk this out by faith. Just don't listen to someone preaching to you. Get the word of God. And we want to listen to preachers and pastors and other people and saints who are teaching us. But we need to get into the word for ourselves. Study to show ourselves to be students of the word. So with studying of the word, with faith, with praying and fasting and coming together and what those things that are unnecessary, put them aside and let us join together and bring praise to God. I thank you all for allowing me to come before you today again. This is Reverend Gooley Hoggard of Rock Faith International Ministries Incorporated in Chester where we're removing walls of separation, removing the walls of separation so we can grow in Christ. Whatever class you're in, God is God. It is time for us to stop putting these walls down, removing these walls so we all can grow in Christ Jesus. So I thank you for allowing me to come before you and we will see you, see you the next time. God bless. Be encouraged. Continue to study the word of God. And that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Will death or life or trials, tribulations, will any of those things separate us? Death, none of that. Because once we're rooted and planted in the Lord, these things that come, they will not overtake us. Well, Paul was saying, basically, to be absent, to be present in this body means I'm absent from the Lord. So, as being present in the body, we're going to go on and do what the Lord called us to do. But once we're absent from this body, no more pain, no more suffering, we'll be with the Lord forever. But until we get there, let us be true believers, not just saying it, but doing it. So, until the next time... Thank you for allowing me to come before you. And again, this is a great day to be alive and especially alive in the Lord.